Father, in Jesus' name, please bless. Hi, everybody. This is Angelo Quinones and you reach Iron Ministries. Iron Ministries is Jijain. To give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holiness, follow the Bible. And right off the bat, I just want to tell you that if my voice sounds a little bit mean and cruel and sad, it's not, it's none of the above. It's just that, you know, I have pain. It's getting better, but I have pain, you know, in my left knee and pain in my lower right back area. So I'm dealing with multiple pains. <laughs> okay, you understand? But let's get back to this. Now we're in the, um, in the series, the full Greek construction series. And this full Greek construction series is designed, okay, to actually help you talk about verses in the original languages when you confront JWs, aka also known as <coughs> Jehovah's Witnesses. They're not witnessing for Jehovah. They don't know Jehovah. I can call myself the president of the Philippines, but does it make me the president of the Philippines? No. Okay? I can call myself the president of the United States. Am I the president of the United States? No. 81 million people didn't vote for Angelo Quinones. They voted for Joe Biden. You understand what I'm saying? So I can call myself anything I want. Am I that person whom I'm calling myself? Now, Jehovah's Witnesses can say, so-called, that they're witnessing for God, but are they witnessing for God? What's the proof? Now, if they're denying things in the Bible, my wife just read, you know, Luke chapter 15 in its entirety. Well, if you deny, you know, Luke chapter 15, do you have a right to call yourself a Christian? No. And there's people who deny the Bible. She read the Bible, but there are people who deny the Bible. So those people who deny the Bible, can they call themselves Christian people? No. So that's just a deal. I mean, they can call themselves that they're witnessing for God, they're serving God. But are they really serving God if they're not living the right way? That's number one. Number two, if they don't even believe what the Bible says about Jesus' bodily resurrection from the dead. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm trying to prove, <laughs> okay, prove that Jesus rose bodily. It's not that he was a spirit only after the resurrection without no body. That's what the Jehovah's Witnesses teaches. But can it be confirmed by this, by the Bible? And it cannot. He had a body. Listen, he had a bo body, which I call his birthday suit. Everybody is born with a birthday suit. Your body, your, 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 your body, your physical body is your birthday suit. That's your birthday suit. You understand what I mean? You came with a birthday suit, okay? And Jesus, when he came here from heaven, listen, before Jesus was born, he was Logos. He was only God. But then he became man. So he was the God man. He never stopped being God, but he added unto him an additional nature, which I call nature two or nature B. He became man. So he was the God man. That's just the deal. So when he became man, right, he became a baby first, and then he grew in wisdom and in stature. That body was on the cross. It was being crucified. It was crucified. It hung there on the cross. It died. But did his spirit die? No. His spirit kept on living, and this is what the series is all about. So let's go to Psalm 16, verse 10, because there it says, hundreds of years before the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, that... The father was not going to leave Jesus, okay, spirit in Sheol. Now, Sheol is the place where the dead go, okay, at least at that time. Now is different. Now, when you die, well, the Bible says to be absent with the bodies, to be present with the Lord. You don't go to Sheol, okay? Now, only the unbelievers go to a place, and that place will be emptied, <coughs> In, in, into the lake of fire in, in the future. But as Christian people, we go to be with God in heaven, awaiting the, the resurrection of our own bodies. But let's just check this out right now. Um, let's go to Psalm. You know what I mean? Psalm 16. Okay. Psalm 16 and verse 10. It only has 11 verses. <clears throat> and these are one of the prophecies of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. It says over here, it says, For you will not, the Hebrew word is lo, for not, you will not, okay, abandon my soul. Okay, psukain is, the, is, the, is in the Greek. Okay, and I think um, that's um, nephesh, 
in, in, in Hebrew, nefesh, soul. You will not leave my soul to Sheol. That's the place of the dead. Jesus said here about, you know, who knows how many years, you know, before, hundreds of years before the resurrection. You will not leave my soul in Sheol. Not only that, nor will you allow your Holy One, meaning me, Jesus is saying, to undergo decay or corruption. There's two things here. Number one, his soul was not going to be left in Sheol. Okay? It was going to return to his body after three days and three nights. Number two, his body was above the planet's surface. And that body wasn't going to see decay or corruption. It wasn't going to waste away. Worms weren't going to destroy the body of Christ. You understand what I mean? Why? Well, he was the son of God. There was no guile foulness in, in his mouth. He was perfect. So his body did not see corruption, did not see decay. So his body, listen, during, after, after um, the crucifixion when he died, okay, his spirit went to Sheol. What, what, he, what, what was he doing there? Well, he was preaching in Sheol, in the prison, Greek word fulake. He was, pre listen, he was preaching to people. What do you mean to people? Well, he was preaching to the spirits in prison who sinned at the time of the flood. But wait a minute, that happened, somebody will say that happened, you know, thousands of years ago, the flood. I mean, those people were still alive, yeah, in their spirit existence. Now, we know where Sheol is. Sheol, listen, Sheol is in the middle of this planet. You cannot travel to Sheol. That's impossible. Sheol is in the middle of this globe, in the middle of this planet. You understand what I mean? The core, the Greek word cardia, the heart of the earth. As a matter of fact, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9, it says the lower regions of the earth. The lower parts of the earth, Sheol. That's where Sheol is. That's where Jesus went. So this idea that Jehovah's Witnesses say, oh no, after the crucifixion, Jesus' spirit was dead. It's a lie because it's telling me in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19, that he was preaching. So if he was preaching, he couldn't be dead. All right. Well, that's, that's why the series is so very important. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, Jehovah Witnesses teaches that before Jesus was born, he was the archangel Michael. Michael. Uh, Michael. Does the Bible teach that? In the beginning was the Word. It doesn't say in the beginning was Michael. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. It doesn't say in the Word was Michael. You understand what I mean? So he wasn't Michael. Before the, the birth and, you know, after the birth and after the resurrection, he wasn't Michael. He was still Jesus. Well, let's read this again. This passage is quite clear. It says over here, For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, nor will you, he's talking to the Father, will you, nor will you, allow your Holy One, meaning me, meaning Christ, he's speaking, to undergo decay, corruption. So like I said, there's two things here. This is the prime directive. This is the main verse. This is the real deal. It's telling you right here, and it's repeated in Acts chapter um, 2, verse uh, 27. Let's go there. Now, the day of Pentecost, Peter is preaching in front of thousands of people. And he said, well, you betray Christ. You ought to know better, because the scripture said that this, was, this is what Jesus was going to do. Let's go there. Acts chapter 2. Okay, you understand what I mean? Acts chapter 2, verse 27. All right, and it says something like this. Well, and, and, and Peter is preaching on the verse that we know as Psalm uh, 16, verse 10. All right, well, Peter says over here, the leading apostle, because you will, and he quotes from this, because you will not. You will not abandon my soul to Hades, it says over here, the abode of the dead. Hades, nor allow, nor allow your Holy One to undergo decay. Meaning, Jesus is saying to the Father, I trust you. 
I know you're not going to leave my spirit in shield. That's number one. Number two, you're not going to let my body see corruption. It's not going to get old in the tomb. It's not going to be like Lazarus' body that in four days is stunk. It smelled. The body of Lazarus smelled after four days. Jesus' body was not like that. Jesus' body did not see decay. You understand what I mean? Actually, let, her, let him be quiet a little bit, honey, because I'm doing a study. Acts chapter 2 says it quite clear. Now, let's go to verse 31. In verse 31, it says something like this. It's telling you this double-folded thing. Okay, it says over here, um, it was talking about David. He, he looked ahead. He looked ahead and spoke of the resurrection, Greek word anastasis, of the Christ, that he, capital H, the Messiah, that he was neither, this is number one, abandoned to uh, Hades, number two, nor did his flesh, Greek word sharks, his flesh suffer decay. Okay? So this idea, and so Jehovah's Witnesses are lying in two different ways. Number one, they lie when they say that the, 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 the listen, that the spirit of Jesus was dead. It doesn't say that he was, the spirit of Jesus was dead here, okay? It wasn't even abandoned. Forget about it not even being dead. It wasn't even left in Sheol. That's just the thing. Number two, Jehovah's Witnesses said that the body of Jesus was destroyed or is being held in some sort of museum in, in, in the universe. Well, that's wrong. If the body was destroyed, then this passage won't make any sense because it says that you will not allow your Holy One to see decay. The Hebrew word, shachat, decay, destruction. Well, it says that his body didn't see decay. So Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong when they said that it did see decay. It was destroyed. It vaporized into gases or turned into gases or whatever the case may be. So they're lying in two different ways. Number one, that his spirit was dead. It wasn't. It was. He was preaching in Sheol. Number two, the body was very much preserved. Okay, above the planet surface in a tomb that no one let yet, uh, yet laid. Well, let me check out the word descend. Let's check out where Jesus was. Well, first of all, we have to go to Matthew chapter 12, verse 40 to see the prophecy that Jesus gave his disciples. Where was he going to be after his death in those three days and three nights? Where was he? Okay, Angelo, you're saying that Jesus, you know, he wasn't dead, that the spirit wasn't dead. It was very much alive. Okay, so what, prove it to me. Where was he? Not only that, what was he doing? Well, I could give you both. Well, let's give it. Matthew chapter 12, he's uh, talking to his disciples, and he says in verse 40, he says something like this. Let's poke the bear. Okay, I like to poke the bear in the eye. All right, verse 40, chapter 12 of the Gospel Katamathion. Okay, that means according to Matthew. Quote, for just as Jonah, now you know the, the prophet the, the prophet Jonah, he was in the in the in the in the in the fish for three days and three nights. And as a matter of fact, outside of the Bible, they found a man alive in a whale. His skin was very white and he was delirious. So don't tell me that can't that, that a man can't be in a whale. Because they found a man in a whale alive. That's why that's and that's according to the uh, the um, ABI. Associates for Biblical Research, the archaeology uh, group, uh, people that makes archaeological discoveries. So they found a whale with a man in it, alive. Thank you. Now verse 10, now verse 40. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly or in the stomach of the sea monster or whale, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in, where? In the heart of the earth. So this is telling me where Jesus was. Forget about the preaching for now. We're going to go there soon. First Peter chapter 3, verse 19. He was preaching those three days and three nights. You understand what I'm saying? But right here, it tells you where he went. So if he went someplace, that means he was very much alive. And he, if he was very much alive, which he was, well, the Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong and they're lying when they're teaching that he was dead. How can he be somewhere and be preaching and dead at the same time? It doesn't make any sense. Well, Jehovah's Witnesses don't make any sense. 
Never. It says over here, for just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so will the Son of Man. Now, this is a great title, the Son of Man. This is a, listen, this is proving that Jesus is Jehovah, God. Son of Man. That's a very, very powerful title for Christ. And you can see that in Daniel chapter 7. And it says over here, So will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So, you know what happened to Jonah? Jonah, book of Jonah, about four chapters. So Jonah was told by God to preach to the, Nineve to the Ninevites. A Gentiles, just scam of the earth. Bad people, evil people. Right into the car. And then, uh, Jonah being a Hebrew, he didn't want to go to the Gentiles. The Goyim, you know, Gentiles in Hebrew. He didn't want to go. Why? Because he knew that God was going to save him. So he didn't want to go. He went to, uh, he went to, I believe he went to Tarshish. He took a boat. And went to Tarshish. And then God uh, created a big storm and prepared the whale for, for Jonah. You know, God didn't want him to go to Tarshish. God wanted him to go to Nineveh. So you see the sailors, the seamen going back and forth, trying to get the boat back on Karsh. And then, you know, and then, and then Jonah says, well, if you throw me overboard, if you throw me in the water, if you throw me in the water, then the, then the seas will calm down. And then so they, they started, oh, well, we don't want to throw him overboard. They started rowing and rowing, row, row, row your boat like that. And then, they, okay, we can't do anything with this boat, so let's just throw him out. And so they threw him out the boat, and then he went down in the water and went down in the whale, and then he still was very much alive and met a, and met a prayer to God in chapter 2. And then he was still in that whale for three days and three nights. You understand what I'm saying? So that was an example of Jesus being somewhere three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The Greek word cardia, heart. That's where we get the word cardiogram. That's where we get the word cardiac arrest, a heart attack. Uh, he was there. But let's see what he was doing. So Matthew chapter 12 verse 40 says where Jesus was. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? But let's go before we go to 1 Peter chapter 3, and I'm almost done. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 19. Let's see another part of the Bible that tells you that he went in the lower regions of the earth. Now, over here it says he went to the heart of the earth. But let's do you have another verse? Well, I just gave you another verse. Psalm 16 verse 10. It told you that he was going to be in Sheol. All right, you want another verse? I'll give you another verse. La, 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 la. <laughs> this is delicious. Okay, so uh, let's check this out. Uh, Philippians and uh, Ephesians right over here. Ephesians chapter 4. In uh, verse 9. Okay, you understand what I mean? So let's see where Jesus was those three days and three nights. And this is very important. Okay. Because if you believe in the if you believe in the wrong Jesus, you're going to hell. That's all there is to it. So that's it. Hi, my love. This is my baby under the vein. <laughs> the vein, please. Let's check this out. Well, it says over here in verse nine of chapter four of Ephesus, of the book of Ephesians, I should say. Now, check this out. Ephesians chapter four, verse nine. It says over here. Now, this expression. Okay, he, check this out, he ascended, meaning he went up, he ascended, okay, what does it mean? Except that he also had descended, meaning went down, I think the word, the Greek word is katabino, into the what? The lower parts of the earth. Look at that. That's what it's telling me. So he went to the lower parts of the earth. That's what it says over here. Now. Let me get this clear as I get the Greek, okay? Uh, sorry about the motorcycle there. Sometimes she laughs and uh, to make the, the, the noises. <laughs> when things make noises, you know, and stuff like that, you know. So, um, let, me, let me say this very clearly. Okay? Well, let's just go to this first. Now, it says over here, Ta... Okay, that's uh, that's an article. That's uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's a singular uh, neuter article. Okay, from the um, uh, from the 
Haheta side of the paradigm, nominative side of the paradigm. There's 24 articles, uh, so-called definite articles in Greek, you understand what I'm saying? And translating the Greek word dead, he ascended, meaning he went up, anabe here in the, in the text, ana, anabino, okay, I go up. And then what, and that's te, that's an interrogative, te, spelled out uh, tau io, uh, iota, is esten, that's third person, esten, F, um, and that's uh, epsilon, sigma, epsilon with a, a, a soft breathing marker, uh, sigma, tau, iota, uh, nu, also known as epsilon, sigma, tough, iota, ni, but anyway, we're not talking about, you know, modern Greek, that's the thing. If, and that's um, epsilon, iota, not... Okay, that's May. That's one of the Greek negatives. I was trying to tell Mark from Missouri. It's not only ook or ooh or ooh. You have May also. You understand what I'm saying? And when they're both of them are together, well, that's the strongest uh, negative in Greek, not just ook or May alone. But, you know, that's besides the point. And it says over here, Hati, that also Greek word Kai. Hey, my love. Hey, my lovey bee. Yes, my lovey bee. Yes, <laughs> we do, we do. Huh. And it says over here, lower. Now, did I skip something? Because I'm playing with my baby at the same time. He descended, okay, kata bay, into Greek word ace. That's a preposition. Into the, and that's ta. And that's a, um, that's a, because of the alpha, that's telling me that this is a, this is, this is simple Greek stuff. I mean, this is first year uh, Greek right here. You understand what I mean? Okay, uh, alpha, that's, uh, that's in the plural. Aside of the of the paradigm, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> this plural, okay. Um, and that's just the deal. Uh, and my baby sneezing. She 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 shook me up. It's like Elvis Presley. Lower, okay. Kato, okay. Kato, katotera, katotera. Kappa, alpha, tau, omega with the acute marker. Tau epsilon rho alpha katotera lower and then regions here is mere mere regions so all together is kato katotera mere of the okay of the earth and that'll be in the genitive uh, singular taste gaze for the earth and that's in the genitive the genitive uh, uh, feminine singular construction. Let's walk the bear though. Let's check out. Let's check out twenty seven. Um, what is it over here? Twenty seven. Um, let's check out twenty seven thirty seven. Let's poke the bear over here. Hi, my love. Hey, hi, my lovey D. Let me let me just fix her up because she's she's moving outside of the pillow here. Hi, my lovey D. Okay, my love. My love, my love. All right, so let's check this out. So it says over here, okay, uh, and I don't know why they put G, because that's a GK number. So this is kind of confusing. Just put S, okay? Uh, S, T, or something like that. Don't put G. But anyway, so this is strong, but anyway, still. There are definite numbers that we know by heart in Hebrew and in Greek, you know, according to the strong system, like, you know, 430 for God and Elohim and then uh, 2316 for Theos and or Theos, you know, I don't care how you pronounce the Omicron nowadays, it's called Omicron. And then you have, you know, 259 for Echad, you know, that's kind of easy and, and 6440 for Panim, that's easy. I mean, and then, you know, you know what I mean? But we can't remember all of these things, okay? You understand what I'm saying? 2737. So what is this? Well, I mean, as my baby pushes me away. Okay, kato, kato teras, kato teras. What is the definition? Well, the definition of this is lower. It's just lower. No, but check this out. Comparative from, uh, let me see, um, Kato, uh, Kato, uh, says over here, it says, locally of Hades. Okay? 
usage lower translated as I guess it's lower over here I mean, there's a whole bunch of there's not a whole bunch of stuff though so you get the idea lower and it has to do with Hades you know so that's just a, like that's just like that's it but let's check out over here okay let's check out over here um the number 3313 let's check out this number right let's check this out for parts, regions, okay, so let's check this out, lexical, okay, meras, mu, epsilon, rho, omicron, sigma, okay, and then you see the definition of this uh, Greek word, meras, a part, share, and it says over here, portion, okay, so that's why you can translate this lower parts, well, let's get to this, let's get to brass tacks. Where was the tomb of Jesus? Was it be below the earth? Un I mean, meaning under the earth. And was it even in the lower parts of the earth? It wasn't in the cardia of the earth. You understand what I'm saying? No. It was above the planet's surface. Just to borrow something from Star Trek. You understand what I'm saying? It was above the planet's surface. It was a tomb. That, I mean, it's a tomb right now that might be the tomb of Christ. You got two candidates. I don't think it's the one that has the church inside and also filled with glitz and glam. I think it's just the one next to a garden, and that's just all there is to it in the garden or whatever you want to call it. Hi, hey, my love. <laughs> you feel so cute. Hi, my love. You did my love. It's my love. <laughs> so anyway, her name is Anna Devane, by the way. She's a year and six months old. So, and praise God for that. So the thing is, and I had her after my old age, 54 years old. It's absolutely insane. But, but anyway, you know, what are you going to do? So when she's 20 years old, I'm, I'm going to be 74. It's amazing, right? <laughs> when she's 40, I'll be like 94. Goodness gracious. But anyway, so this is the deal. So the deal is that, you know, the tomb of Christ was above the planet's surface. So I can't, that's, the, that's not the candidate for the lower parts of the earth, the cardia of the earth. You understand what I mean? So Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9, and um, Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, and Psalm 16, verse 10, tells you where Jesus was going to be. And not only that, well, you have Luke, uh, the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 23, verse 43, tells you exactly where he was going to be. Let's get there. Well, let's see. I have over here, let's poke the bear, Luke chapter, um, almost the last chapter. Luke chapter 23. Okay, we'll we'll come close. To, it doesn't have to be exactly at verse 43, you know. But uh, let's see if we could do the best we can. You understand what I'm saying? Hi, my love. And actually, let me move the recorder thing. I don't want to stop the recorder. It would be just a shame. I know JWs would be so happy if this recorder stops. You understand what I'm saying? Luke chapter 23, verse 43. Hi, my love. Hey, it's my love. Let me straight you up, my love. Why are you crooked, my lovey, my baby? Huh? Why are you so crooked? Huh? Okay. She gets crooked on the pillow. You know, she leans to the left or to the right. Well, it says in uh, Luke chapter 23, verse 43, it says over here, and, okay, he said to him. First of all, I want to say something. I think the King James says, G well, first of all, it doesn't have Jesus over here. Meaning, the, it doesn't say uh, Jesus said. It says he said. Okay? To him. It says, Kai Apen, Kai Apen Auto. You know, the he is from the context, though. I understand that. And he said to him, doesn't have Jesus over here. So why, which one and complain uh, against the Bible, the NIV that has Jesus more anyway? This is for the, you know, King, John, King James only knuckleheads, you know, that, that I think they run the show. You know so what I mean? They think they have the copyright on the Bible. You know what I mean? It first of all, it has Jesus more in the NIB by a count of 1,241 to 971. It's not even close. It's by a whopping 270. It's not even, it's not even close. And then you have Easter in the King James, and then you have other things in the King. You have Jesus dying before he went to the cross. Okay, right? According to verse 30, chapter 5 of, the, of uh, Praxis Apostle on the Acts of the Apostles. Okay? And should I go on? Turtles talking in uh, chapter 2 of Song of Solomon, a target in uh, the rear end of... Uh, <laughs> of Goliath. I mean, come on, guys. The Holy Spirit being called an it in, in, in Romans chapter 8. 
you know. And he goes on and on and on. The Holy Spirit being missing in verse 25 of chapter 4. Praxis Apostoloni actually a pastor. How about that? Well, I could go on and on and on. Anyway, I mean, so it says over here, and, and it says, okay, and he said to him, truly, truly, I mean, I mean, or just one, uh, uh, actually, I think it's only one. I mean to you, it says, soy, I say, comma, lego, I say, from lego, leges, lege, you understand what I'm saying? Lega man, lega te, lega, uh, and I forgot the other one. <laughs> it says today, okay? Probably like Lucy or something like that. Okay, <laughs> like Lucy. Like Today it says over here. Okay, Severan. Uh, it has it after the comma, not before. It doesn't say truly, truly. I say or you know. Um, uh, he said. It doesn't say. Let me see. And he said uh, to him, uh, truly, uh, to you. I say today, no, it just has the today after, but that's another issue. Same and on. It says over here, with, Greek word met, short for meta, me, Jesus said to the repentant criminal, emu, and that's emphatic, okay? I know there's not that much emphasis on it, but we preachers could do it. I'll tell you that right now. We Bible teachers, by the grace of God, says, you will be in, okay, ese, you will be in, and it says en, uh, to paradiso, paradise. Jesus, so Jesus said he was going to paradise with the with the with the with the repentant criminal. He didn't say that my soul was going to be destroyed. He said that that he was going to go in paradise with the repentant uh, robber that very day. He was going to be in paradise. So basically, Luke chapter twenty three verse forty three, Ephesians chapter four verse nine, Psalm sixteen verse ten, and uh, Matthew chapter twelve verse forty all tell you together as a group. Where Jesus was going to be after um, his death upon the cross. No, it's not that bad, the pamper. It smells good. It smells delicious as my wife shoves the pamper in my face, right, hon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she shoves it. She just shoves it. Just throw it in my face. <laughs> and that's what we should do we should throw all the pamphlets and magazines well not me because I'm not in the tower but you should throw if you're a witness you should throw all the pamphlets and magazines and the tracks right in the face of the Jehovah's Witnesses because they're like a dirty diaper alright so but this region I think is very 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 important the lower regions the lower parts of the earth the inner core of the earth. You understand know what I mean? That's just the deal. All across the board. Now, uh, you know, I really wanted to stress that out today. Okay? The Greek of uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9. Okay? It tells you that. Now, now remember that Jesus didn't go to heaven right away. He, first of all, after he died, went to Sheol. He went to Paradeso. Another word is for, uh, Hades. Well, how can I say that? Well, let's let's go to John chapter um, twenty verse seventeen. She, he, you know, listen. He's talking to Mary Magdalene. Okay. Uh, my baby's taking a bath, and she hate she hates taking a bath. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so let's go to uh, chapter twenty, verse seventeen. That's okay, my love. Take a bath. Take a bathy. Take a bathy, my love. All right. Why baby so... He took in a bath. Why everybody has to take a bath? Anyway? <laughs> I don't know. Remember Gilligan's Island? Um, and they made a bathtub. And then and then the skipper said, Well, this is going to come handy in Saturday nights. I mean, uh, he only took a bath Saturday. <laughs> Lego. Okay, or Lege says over here, says uh, to her, okay, Alte, Jesus, and it says Jesus, an anonymous of singular construction. The full paradigm for uh, uh, Jesus' name here, okay, you don't see it here, but the full paradigm is Jesus, Yesu, Yesu, and then Yesun. Okay, so that's just the full paradigm. It's the same construction for the dative and the genitive, you know what I'm saying? 
It says over here, uh, not, okay, may, move, okay, um, touch. And that's, um, hop to. But this is a, she was touching him, though. She was touching. Not yet for, it says over here, okay, upo, gar, have I ascended, okay, ana bebeka, ana bebeka, okay, and uh, this is in the perfect tense, ana bebeka, uh, to pros, and that's a preposition, one of 17 small prepositions, 17, something like that, tan, okay, uh, patera, and that's an accusative case construction. Okay, uh, Father. And in Hebrew, New Testament will be Av. So he says that he didn't go to the Father yet. Okay. Go. And it says over here, uh, Poru, Poru, por, let me see, Poru. Poru. Go. How about, and then, you know, and I go to my Father and your Father and my God and your God. And then Zechariah chapter 3, I think Zechariah chapter 3 verse 8 really tells you um, why he had a God. And he had a God because he's the servant. He was a servant. Not only the son, but he was serving God. My servant, the branch. So you can answer the witnesses according to, you know, my God. Uh, the my God uh, passages of scripture. The four uh, located in Revelation chapter 3. Okay, and and the 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 ones sprinkled all over the New Testament. Let's just face it. But he had a God according to not election, not regeneration or anything like that, nor no, not adoption, but because he served God. All right, so um, so that's just the deal. So he did not ascend yet. Now he said that he was going that he. To the uh, brothers, go to, to the brothers of me, go to the brothers of me, and say to them, this is very important, say to them, I am ascending to, well, that, 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 it's not, that, he's not, why would he tell them that he's ascending if that was the ascension, you know, after the 40 days? No, he was going to ascend at that time. So, I mean, you know, this is actually... This, the uh, first ascension, the first ascension, and the uh, the one in um, Acts. That's the second ascension, and people talk about the second coming of Christ. No, the third coming of Christ. Okay, he came the first time as a baby. He came the second time. Okay, in the room where the disciples were, and he's going to come the third time. There's no there's no mentioning of second uh, coming. He is going to come, but it's this number this number two thing, I don't see it anywhere. I don't see a second coming. I see that altogether is the third coming, but people don't preach that correctly, just like they say that Adam and Eve passed the buck, and they didn't pass the buck in Genesis chapter 3. They were just telling uh, you know God the truth. Cain didn't tell him the truth, and he wasn't saved. Genesis chapter 4. The woman that you gave me, she gave to me, and I ate. That's why it's not passing the buck. But you see, all preachers being afraid to break the mold and say what really happened in Genesis chapter 3. Because why? Because they want to laugh. That's all. They want some, some people to laugh at them in, in, in church. I'm not in it for that. I'm in it for accuracy. And if I have to be, you know, the first of, uh, or not the first, but, you know, one of a few that get it right, well, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so this is the second coming. No, no, I think it's the third coming because he came uh, into, uh, you know, from heaven uh, to the disciples. He appeared there and then uh, also uh, bodily. And also he's going to appear the third time. Uh, he's going to uh, come back on, on the clouds of glory. Okay, according, according to chapter 7 of Revelation chapter 1 and, uh, you know, um, Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapter 21, he's going to come again. Now, is it the second time? Everybody says it's the second coming. According to everything put together, this very important verse, verse 17 of chapter 20, well, that's going to be his third coming, not his second. But that's just something that, I, that I'm boldly uh, pronouncing. Now, you could disagree with it all you want, but you have to explain this verse. He said, I am going. It says it right over here. 
If he was going, well, that's the first ascension. The first ascension is not in chapter 1 of Praxis Apostle on the Acts of the Apostles. It's as simple as ABC. It's not the first ascension. This is the first ascension. I am going. It doesn't say I will go. <laughs> it says I am going. Let's check this out. I am going. Let's check this out. Let me see here. Uh, I am going. Okay. Well, it says over here a present indicative active. It's in a present tense. It's not in a future tense. It, says, it doesn't say I will go. It says, you know, I am ascending. Now, was he, he ascending at that same time that he was talking to Mary? Uh, he might have just ascended right after she left or right uh, when he was still talking to her or whatever the case may be. It doesn't say that he's, he, she saw him going up. That's the, that's the problem that people have, that they, they, they didn't see this, this him going up. I have not ascended to, that's why, you know, I, she allowed he, her, her to touch him. But according to some people, he was, she wasn't supposed to be touched. According to the Old Testament. But I believe that he was touching, uh, he was being touched by her, continuously so. And that's just the deal. Well, let's look at Hop 2. And say, let's see. To the brothers, okay, 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 okay. And it should be this line over here. Okay, touch. Let's check this out. Okay. Uh, this is a present, okay, imperative middle. A present imperative middle. Okay, she was touching him. Okay, she was touching him. And, and the NASB gets it right. Okay, our uh, have to is over here. And, um... Uh, someone said in CRI, when CRI was CRI, I mean, you know, in the 1990s that the, that the Hebrew word is hopto. I have to check that out. Um, as a matter of fact, I want to see that now um, from the Hebrew New Testament. Let me see if I can find a Hebrew New Testament here with this magnifying glass, which is very hard to do. Okay. I wasn't thinking of finding it here. So let's see if I could get it anyway. Okay. But before we do that, okay, let me see. It's very hot. My, my, my wife turned off the fan because my baby, um, she was taking the baby a bath. But she turned off the fan and I'm sweating buckets. I'm sweating bullets over here. <laughs> okay, you understand? So it's very hard to think. So let's go to uh, John chapter. It's very hard to think like that. And I think that's why people, you know, create these doctrines at the tower. They're too hot. Okay, over there. And, and no, no, probably no air conditioning in that, that Burger King uh, castle. As a matter of fact, in the book of Amos, it says that God will destroy the evil kingdom. You understand what I mean? That's what, it says. That's what he says. Well, let's go to um, yeah, John chapter 20 and verse uh, 17. Okay. Spoke the bear there. And it says, uh, Jesus said to her, okay, stop clinging. You see that? She was touching him. Stop clinging to me. For... I have not yet ascended at all my father uh, to the father. Okay, honey, turn on the fan. It's so hot, my love. <laughs> oh my God, I'm sweating. Baby. Oh, is she is she still wet? Yeah, she's still. Oh, forget it, forget it. Because it's okay, it's okay. All right. Whew. So it says, um, Jesus said um, to her, "I'm going to cut the study short, guys. Stop." clinging to me so she was touching uh now this is another thing if jesus didn't have a body how can mary magdalene be holding on to uh jesus over here in verse 17 chapter 20 of the gospel kata you know my name doesn't make it oh he materialized the body where does that say oh it says it in a, uh, in a different form it says that in mark chapter 16 verse 12 no it doesn't there is no mark chapter 16 verse 12 There is no uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 12. You understand what I'm saying? That was not according to the earliest and best manuscripts like Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. This is Angelo Quinones giving glory, but to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me give you one more verse. 
the verse that we have been studying for several years. Okay, you understand? Woo, it's hot. Goodness gracious. It's like, uh, I can't even think. Now, so uh, that's just the deal. First Peter, Petras, Petras Alpha, First Peter chapter 3. Understand? First Peter chapter, let's, let's start with verse 8. 18, rather. And this will be it for the study. For Christ also died for sins once, for all. The just for the unjust, so that he, meaning Christ, might bring us to God. Okay, having been put to death in the flesh. You see, the spirit didn't die, the flesh died. Put to death uh, in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit now first of all there's no contrast if that flesh wasn't made alive there's no contrast this is all about contrast over here well there's no contrast if 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 if, if it says that the body died and then uh, it's no contrast now what was he doing well, we already saw in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19, uh, you know, uh, Psalm 16, verse 10, all these passages, uh, passages that we saw, okay, uh, passages, I'm speaking, uh, you know, like Julio Iglesias, that's <laughs> what I'm saying, uh, passages, all these passages, <laughs> it says, in which, it doesn't mean after, in which also he went, and uh, made a proclamation, okay, to the uh, spirits, now, that's not there in the Greek, now in prison, fulake. Well, he was preaching. There you go, right there. And you see the word preaching, the same word, okay, uh, I think the the, the, the the Greek word is uh, caruso, right? Caruso, I think is the Greek word over there, caruso. Let me see the Greek word over there before I go. Let me see, let me, let me look at this one. Let me look at this one over here. So there's hello. Hello. So let me see over here. Caruso, Caruso, Caruso. Let me see. She's over here. Hmm. My love. My love. My love. <laughs> uh. I'll get the fan in a second, honey. Don't worry. I see six. What is this over here? Petro. What? Alpha Petro. Bye, my love. Bye bye. Bye bye. 17, 19. Okay, well, where's verse 19? Let me see. It's a lot of a lot of uh, distractions. Sorry about that, guys. People coming in and out, and uh, the the heat, my pain. I mean, you know, it's like Dr. Smith from Lost in Space. You know what I'm saying? So it says over here, uh, it says uh, Timio. Is that uh, verse 19 or what? This over here. This is if this is um it doesn't seem like uh chapter 19 though Christ. Hmm, this is I don't know. Let me see. Oh, I don't think that's the chapter though. I gotta I gotta correct the chapter. No, that's not the chapter, it's gamma. Now I'm right. I knew that wasn't right when I was reading it. So let's see here. 13 13, 13, 13. This is the last thing, guys. 17. And there's a 21. And there's a... Uh, ha, 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 ha. Let me see. Man, it's so hot, my God. This is uh, 18. 19, verse 19. Uh, here it goes, and 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 this and ho, and that's a uh, that's a relative pronoun, a relative pronoun over there. 
and a data site and call Kai a toys it says N Fulake and that's prison it says over there let me see Panuma see Peruthes says Peruthes over here Peruthes Ekeruxen And then Noah it says over here uh, uh, at the time of Noah, the, the, he was, was preaching to the spirits of the dis disobedient at the time of Noah. It says over here Noah, Ekeruxen. Geruso is the Greek word, okay, for um, in the lexical form uh, for a preach, meaning he was preaching. Well, guys, I better go because I am sweat sweating bullets over here. I mean, it's like a Thompson. You understand what I'm saying? Well, take care, guys. So we see, or we saw in this study that Jesus actually was resurrected according to the body, not according to the spirit. The spirit didn't see any death. The body didn't see any decay. The spirit returned from Sheol to the body. Thus, Jesus stood again, fulfilling all prophecy. This is Angelo Quinones, given glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. Take care, guys. Okay, now, here's, all the, here, here's the little thing. Okay, take care, guys. Bye-bye now.